tick 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 that's how every single second passes with that passing second we change as provocative and as profound it sounds we change with time why do we change we change because we don't become, want to become obsolete that's our need we change according to our needs what's the most basic fundamental need of life to survive to thrive and to adapt to adverse conditions and to environmental situations so we don't only change with size and shape but we also change in our needs and so layer upon layer of these adaptive situations adaptive adaptabilities to adverse conditions and stressful situations over a period of time over a period of seconds milliseconds years decades millennials compile evolution and that's how we have evolved what are the time stamps that the environment has left on us you hear these talks every day we are changing the environment we are inducing climate change but have you stopped to think how the environment is changing us what are the time stamps the environment has left on us on our dna see evolutionary we were told that dna is your destiny your genes make it a man but recent emerging evidence from our laboratories and several other all over the world think that this might not be the case you see imagine if you are a 6 feet tall human being and you want to fit inside a 1 cm small hole can you do it as impossible as it sounds that's exactly what your dna does in a single cell the nucleus contains dna which is 6 feet tall and so that dna it uses a trick of super coiling so it wounds around proteins called as histones imagine of histones as being spools for your dna so the dna winds around histones it super coils and it fits into that tiny nucleus this phenomena is called as epigenetics something which is on top of your dna it's an epi phenomena what's more interesting is that that winding that super coiling while it solves one problem of fitting that dna inside a cell it presents with another challenge it presents a challenge of the functionality of the gene so if the dna is loosely wound that gene is active but if the dna is compact it's compressed then it's repressed so the functionality of the gene is suppressed and here it comes the environmental factors can affect whether the gene is functional or whether the gene is repressed and so the environmental factors will leave marks will leave imprints on your dna to decide whether the gene is functional or whether the gene is repressed so if you think of genetics as genes then epigenetics is what regulates whether the gene will be active when it will be active how much it will stay active and what factors contributes what factors decides whether it will be active or not let me give you a symphonic example close your eyes think of a symphony which is your favorite symphony now think of it being played by yani or mozart 
All right, now think of it being played by Kanye West or Eminem. <laughs> As you all can imagine, the results will be completely different. That's exactly what happens between two different cells of your body. Your brain cell and your kidney cell, they both have the same DNA. They both have the same genotype. But their functions, their locations, their morphologies are completely different. And that's your phenotype. And that's what's controlled by epigenetics. What's interesting is these epigenetic marks, even though they might be induced in a millisecond or a specific event, they not only last throughout your lifetime, but they can also be transferred through multiple generations. All right. I would ask you to close your eyes again and think of an event which is really stressful. Think of the memory you have of that event. For some people, standing here and giving this TED talk might be stressful. For some people, that day of wedding was the most stressful. But on a serious note, for some people, our war veterans especially, coming from the war zone, the events they have been exposed to over there is the most stressful in their life. And they store those memories in their brain. And studies, especially preliminary studies from animals, show that the epigenetic marks in your brain create those memories. Those micro timestamps also sustain throughout your lifetime. If you think about it, we interact with the environment by taking food, air, water as resources. But how do they affect us? How do they live and imprint on us? And think about as diet. The most basic diet, the most basic thing we consume, milk. We are the only species, or maybe one of the rare species, that consumes milk throughout lifetime. We don't only consume milk from human breast milk, we also consume milk from other species. Cow, sheep, goat, camel. But the ability to digest milk, lactose, weans out after a certain age, especially in certain individuals. Whether it is epigenetic, whether it is genetic, is still debated. But the diet you consume leaves an epigenetic mark on your lactase gene. So we have evolved, we have adapted to digest lactose throughout lifetime. Macro timestamps. These adaptions to adverse conditions not only last through your lifetime, they also get transferred to multiple generations. Studies in the pregnant mothers, especially during the Great Famine in Netherlands after the Second World War, showed that kids born to these pregnant mothers were highly susceptible or predisposed towards developing neurological disorders as well as diabetes. And so there was an environmental sensor placed in those pregnant mothers that there's food scarcity out there, there's less food out there, so upregulate your genes. So play your genetic car in such a way that you can maximize the energy production from the food which you get, from the energy source you get. So if these epigenetic marks are laid down on cells which are responsible for reproduction like germ cells, sperm cells or egg cells, then these epigenetic marks, they stay not only your life long, but also through multiple generations. So you are what not you eat, but what your parents ate, what your grandparents ate, and so on and so forth. But before you start blaming your 
grandparents for what they ate. <laughs> These marks are reversible. The healthy choices you make in terms of your diet decide not only your future, but also the future of your next generation. And think about this for a minute the future of our species as humans. And that's what happens. At some point, our near and dear ancestors, not our forefathers, chimpanzees, <laughs> they had something in their diet which silenced certain genes which made us who we are. And those genes some studies suggest that those genes might be the retroviral DNA, might be the junk DNA, which we don't know what the purpose of those DNA in our body is or in our genome is. Whether it contributes to us intellectuality, whether it contributes towards us being smart, we don't know yet. But there's a difference of epigenetic marks laid down on their genome as compared to our genome. Although we share so much ancestry in terms of DNA with them, still, we are not scratching ourselves. We're not running around, jumping on branches. So epigenetic marks contributed to us being smarter, us being different from them. So each living organism share two history. One, which starts with the conception at birth and other which we carry in our own DNA in form of a species. And so the choices you make today with your time, with your health, not only contributes towards your future as an individual, it contributes to your future generation, to your future kids, grandkids, great, 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 great gone kids. Whether you want to make them smarter as a species, it's all up to you in your hands. Thank you. <laughs>